Anyway, what we'll do is we'll chant a little bit. And, uh, we've come without any props really, except books. Yeah. And we didn't know what to expect or how many people might come. You know. We've got no instruments. <laughs> yeah. So, um, and normally we serve food as well, you know, as part of the group. We don't actually have anything. But just a small group. So I think we can capitalize on the fact that we're just a few and we can explore, isn't it? So, what I would like you to do is, whatever questions you have, you know, and I, I have to make this very clear that I'm a student of Bhakti Yoga, I'm not, I'm not a master. Right? <laughs> I'm not a master, I'm a student. But I have been studying it for a long time, more than 40 years. You know? So, um, although I may not be competent to answer all your questions, still, I think we can have an interesting discussion. If you're interested. So, at any stage, you can just stop and say, can you explain this, or can we talk a bit more about that, you know, how about this, and if anyone has any stories to tell, if anyone wants to talk, if you have a comment that you want to say, you, think, you know, I want, I want to have five minutes of people, somebody listening to me, you know what I mean, and I'll, and just, yeah, we will, will, uh, what shall I say, function more as rather than me giving a lecture, which I could do, and I could talk for hours, yeah? we, can, we could have more of a conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, Bhakti Yoga is somewhat different from Hatha Yoga. But the thing is that Hatha Yoga is actually a component of the yoga system. Systemu yogi. So yoga is a is a compact system. Actually, yoga is pewnym takim kompleksowym systemem. It's not a fragmented thing. Nie jest to rozdzielona rzecz. But sometimes you would say I'm a hatha yogi, I'm a jnana yogi, I'm a karma yogi, jnana yogi, jnana karma yogi, jnana yogi. Actually. It, you know that Krishna makes very clear, and even Patanjali makes clear in his Yoga Sutras that yoga is a comprehensive thing. Yeah? It's, it's one thing, it's not many things. Yeah. And the, the word yoga actually comes from the Sanskrit root yuk. Yeah. And, um, yuk in Sanskrit means to join together. So, um, do you have a root like that in Polish? Because the word, English word join, yoga and yoga is actually the same word. Mm -hmm. And in Latin it's yoga, junction, to join. Yeah. Do you have a word like that in Polish? Yeah. There are, is it, there are many words in Polish that, come, that seem to be related to Sanskrit. And yes, many words in English also and Latin. And English is part of the Indo-European language group. Mm. And strangely enough, when scholars went to India, they, um, they discovered that there was a strong connection between Sanskrit and, and Latin and Greek and German and English, you know, Italian, all these languages, and they all formed one group. Yeah. Um, and even there are many words like we, there was one word, sweat, sweat, is it sweater? Sweatlina? It means white or pure. Świat, light. Świat, light. Świat. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Ponieważ każde słowo ma swój korzeń. For datus. Coś nazywa datu. And the root is neither a verb nor a noun, but it's. To nie jest czasami gęściej. And it may have many meanings. Ale ma wiele znaczeń. It's, it, it, the, the root may have many, a variety of different meanings. Może mieć każdy taki and it's only when you start sticking on the prefixes and stuff like that, that it starts to... Końcówkę, czy yeah. prefix, czy suffix, mm. to nabiera innych znaczeń. Polish is similar, yeah? Is Polski like podobny jest. Similar yeah. language? I don't know any Polish. But, yeah. And uh, I know some Italian. Znam, nie znam polskiego, znam troszkę German. włoskiego, niemieckiego. Yeah. Language is a very interesting thing, actually. It's very yes, very interesting. Yeah. That, um, and some people claim that. I mean, there's a claim, of course. Some yogis will claim that. That you know, the Sanskrit language kind of resonates with the with the object that it describes. You know? Whether or not that's true, I can't say. Yeah, isn't it? Nie mogę na 100% powiedzieć, że to prawda. The Jews say similar things about Hebrew. Ponieważ Żydzi mówią to samo yeah. o hebrajskim języku. And I think even Slavic was a sacred language, isn't it? Niektórzy mówią, że słowiański język yeah. był świętym językiem. And everybody knows it's the intention with which you say the thing that's important. Yeah. Ale każdy rozumie, yeah. że to jest po to, żeby powiedzieć, yeah. wyrazić ważne rzeczy. But language can be very powerful, and ja certainly ideas are very powerful, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So we live a short life, but there's a lot we can accomplish within that. And many people spend time trying to accumulate things, which is basically a waste of time. To tak naprawdę jest stratą czasu. Yeah, because when you die, of course, you can't take anything. Ponieważ kiedy umrzesz, nie możesz zabrać rzeczy ze sobą. So, but this body is an instrument. Is that an instrument? It's a tool. To ciało jest jak instrument. And an instrument is meant to sing. A instrument yeah. służy po to, żeby na nim grać. Yeah. So it's the sounds that come out of the body. To jest ten dźwięk, który wychodzi z ciała. So according to the Vedas. The universe is manifested out of sound. It comes out of sound. So in the beginning there was a sound. And even in the Bible it says, you know, in the beginning there was a word. Again, if you have any questions you want to ask anything, at any stage just ask. You know? And um, so that primordial sound of the Vedas is Om. And there are other sounds that come out of that. The whole alphabet, they're called akshuras. Yeah, if you're studying the Sanskrit alphabet, you're studying Hindi a little bit. You see, when, when the British went to India, they were really quite shocked. Yeah. Because they thought the Indians were like savages. Yeah. Savage is very primitive. They thought primitive culture, <laughs> primitive <laughs> customs. Primitive like this too. Yeah. 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 And then they discovered Sanskrit. Yeah. And they thought the alphabet is laid out perfectly, isn't it? It's like R, E, E, U, U, like that. Everything's in order. Everything's in order. R, E, I, O, A, A, A. Like that, you know, ka, ka, ga, ga, no, like that, and so on and so forth. Everything is squared off and laid out in perfect order. Everything is labeled. What, what articulatory organ is used, being used? Yeah. The, the, uh, the sounds are laid out in, in series, you know? Yeah. And actually, the science of phonetics was born. I w ten sposób narodziła się nauka o discovery of Sanskrit. W zasadzie od odkrycia sanskrytu. Yeah. Who's ever studied phonetics? Kto, Mateus? Kto studiował fonetykę? Mateus? What, what did you study? Did you go to university? Yeah. Phonetics? Linguistics? Linguistics? Yeah. Yes? Yeah. At university level. Linguistics? 
Este ca la Universitatea I see. Oh, that's fascinating, yeah? Did you, did you learn it in terms of modern theories or what was your feeling about it? Did you find it really boring? Or what? Ale to difficult to learn historical grammar and Trudno by się uczyć historycznej yeah. gramatyki. Why this word sounds like that today? Dlaczego yeah. jakieś słowo brzmi w ten sposób dzisiaj, a kiedyś miał inaczej? Well, the big question in is, of course, is where does language come from? Why do words mean anything at all? Yeah. Yeah. Co znaczy, tak I mean, these are these are the questions that all the linguists are scratching their heads, isn't it? You know? And because of because of uh, modern evolutionary theory, of course. Um, this, there's this idea that we are now very much progressed. We are advanced. So that means in the past we just kind of grunted at each other. Said, oh, oh. It, you know? <laughs> and gradually the grunts kind of turned into a language. Language developed, but actually they find that if you study linguistics, you find linguistics absolutely flies in the face of evolutionary theory. The further you go back in history, the more complex and sophisticated the languages are. And even though the ancient Indian culture didn't have like factories and you know it may they may have had aeroplanes actually. They may have had aeroplanes. Yeah. As there's actually descriptions of aeroplanes in the Vedic literatures, the descriptions, they're called Vimanas. And there's even a scripture, a book actually, it's all about how to make a Vimana. No one has yet figured out, because the Sanskrit's kind of difficult, you know? So they're trying to figure out how this Vimana is constructed. Yeah, so I mean a Vimana really if you if you look at the structure it looks like a flying saucer, isn't it? It's like a flying saucer, yeah. Saucer? Oh, there's a flying saucer, you know? Saucer, what is saucer? A disc, you know, ah, a flying to disc. Wygląda yeah. Trochę jak latający talerz. yeah, what do you call it? UFO? UFO, you know? yeah. Like yeah. UFO. Yeah, yeah. So uh, they had flying machines of some kind. Or well, they knew about them. Mieli jakiś rodzaj latających maszyn, albo przynajmniej we powered, we don't know. Czy jaki rodzaj silnika używali, jaki rodzaj napędu, In, tego nie wiemy. Um, near Puri there's a big temple, Konark. Do you ever go to Jamath Puri? Jest taka świątynia w Konark. Did you go to Puri? Właśnie w Puri kiedyś? Puri, it's on the coast. Puri to jest na wybrzeżu. Big temple there in Jamath Puri. Tam jest taka duża świątynia. It's very famous. Jest bardzo znana yeah. yeah. świątynia. The, the history of the temple is quite interesting because uh, there's no history of the, 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 the temple being built. It was excavated. It was dug out of the sand. It was covered in sand. And the king, yeah, the king at the time dug it out of the sand. Yeah. So there's no one knows when it was built. Także nie wiadomo, nikt nie wie kiedy ona została yeah. zbudowana. They only know when it was rediscovered. Nie wiadomo, wiadomo tylko kiedy została ponownie yeah. odkryta. And there's lots of places, even throughout the world there are places like that. You know? Yes, wiele takich miejsc. Even in England we have very old ones. Nawet w, w Anglii są takie miejsca, które knows how old they, they o których are. nikt nie wie jak one jest, ile mają lat. Yeah. And it seems to point to the idea that people knew things a long time ago that we don't know. In Konark there was a temple to the sun. And there were four gigantic magnets in each corner of the temple. Huge magnets. And the magnets were so powerful that the deity, the Murti, you know, the figure of the sun god, was floating on the uh, so it was actually floating in the air due to the power of the magnets. 
And when the British discovered that, they immediately took out the magnets. They took the magnets away. They said, we can't allow this. And then when they discovered Sanskrit, they thought, this is a perfect language. And even one um, a computer scientist said if there was any language that was fit for programming computer and, you know, like communicating with human beings, it was Sanskrit. Because Patanjali has listed all the rules of that language in order. There's thousands of them. But all you have to do is feed those rules into the computer and the computer can produce perfect Sanskrit. So in the old days, the children would learn the dictionary off by heart. Can you imagine that? <laughs> They'd learn the Amara Kosh or whatever dictionary it was. They and the Amara, these dictionaries are all in verse. They're poetic. And they're basically just lists of synonyms, you know? So you just learn all of this. Like, so 20 words for water or something. Like 20 words for only for one word love, but they have about 30 words. 30 words. 30 words. 30 words. But they all mean something slightly different. There's each one has a yes, like, uh, love for God, love for That's somebody, right. love yeah. for God. That's right. Anyway, enough about Sanskrit. Yeah. But uh, that's just a little background. Is that interesting for you? Is that interesting for you? Yeah. I mean, nowadays people are interested in the flow of culture, isn't it? The flow of culture. And everyone's trying to rediscover their own ancestral roots, isn't it? Like, the Polish people want to find out, you know, where do the Poles come from, isn't it? You know? <laughs> what was, you know, what were the, what's the roots of the Polish people? And uh, I don't know my. I mean, I mean, I'm originally Welsh. I think my family are Welsh. Yeah. Mm. So that's the Celtic peoples, isn't it? Celtic, the Celts. So they come from in Europe somewhere. They traveled Europe. Europe, you know. So we don't know. All these things are lost in the past. But in the in the Bhagavatam, there are lists of different types of people. You know, Anandras, Balindas, Kushas, mm. and they actually describe the different areas where all these different people live. You know? And it seems like maybe 5,000 or 6,000 years ago, there were kings who who ruled the world, who ruled the entire world. Yeah. I mean, that doesn't mean they necessarily went everywhere in the world. Yeah. But there was a kind of a pervasive culture that spread. Yeah. Even like Angkor Wat. Have you, have you been to Angkor Wat? Cambodia. Cambodia. Bali and these places. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, I had been yeah. to Cambodia, but um, I didn't visit Angkor. You didn't go to Angkor Wat, yeah. yeah. And Lingam, Shiva Lingams have been found all over the world, isn't it? Yeah. Lingam worship some of the most ancient form of worship. Mm. You've all heard of Shiva, have you heard of Shiva? Yes. 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 So, you know, um, so Bhakti Yoga is often viewed as being only a part of the yoga system. Yes. And of course, many Jnani Yogas and people who do other Yogas, they have, they have traditionally kind of Look down on the bhakti yoga. The, the, the idea has been that bhakti yoga is for kind of 
silly people. Mówią, że to jest dla takich yeah. prostych ludzi. People who, who haven't got the brain you know, to, to do the jnana yoga, yeah. or who are not fit enough to do the ashtanga yoga, you know, who don't have the endurance to do the, the meditation, you know. Yeah. Let them sing and dance. Talk about love. <laughs> That's for the common people. <laughs> yeah. So, and that way yoga has kind of been split up into different, you know, they say, I'm a Gyani yoga. Yeah, I'm a Hatha yoga. You know, I'm a, I'm a Raja yogi. So, yeah, I'm a Kriya yoga. Yeah. But if you read any of these yoga texts, particularly, you know, the Bhagavad Gita, and the Yoga Sutras, have you heard of the Yoga Sutras? Yeah? No? Yeah? No. No. Yeah. No. I listened to something like this, but I don't understand. Yeah. Sutras, yeah. Do you know what a sutra means? Yeah, I don't know what sutra means. No. No. no? Anyone? No. No. It means a thread. Sutra means a thread. Like in, in here, in the, be in the beads in the middle, is a thread. Yeah. Yeah. So there are some very famous sutras. There are some Patanjali sutras are very famous. The Ashtadhyaya, Patanjali go so much. Which are the which are the grammatical sutras, you know, which lay out the Sanskrit language. Kuresa grammatical i opisują sanskrit. His his history is quite interesting because Patanjali was actually rather stupid in school. He was kind of he wasn't good at grammar at all. Tak naprawdę z Patanjali w szkole nie był zbyt zdolny w gramatyce. And uh, he was a bit ashamed of himself because all his fellow students were. Very good. Yeah? He, his memory was not good, and he. Yeah. So he he went away to a lonely place and he prayed and prayed to Lord Shiva. And Lord Shiva appeared to him. And he has this little drum. You know the little drum. You probably have that. You know and that kind of noise. Hałasuje. Yeah, and Lord Shiva played his drum called Dhamma and Dhamma. And all the letters of the Sanskrit alphabet came out of that. that drum. And on the basis of that, it's called the Shiva Sutras, actually. Patanjali became, uh, not Patanjali, um, um, uh, what's his name? Um, uh, Actually, my memory's just gone. I'm not talking about the time, but it's um. What's wrong with my memory, Mr. Jai? My memory's just gone. I've just lost the name of that person. Anyway, never mind. He wrote his yoga. He wrote his um, his sutras for the um, the Ashtajai, Panini. Panini's Ashtajai. Yeah, Panini is Panini's not a bread a bread roll. <laughs> yeah, it's it's the name. <laughs> it's the name of. Panini, to to nie są nie są rodzaj ciastka, to jest to jest taki. And Patanjali, do you know who he was? You get any idea? Patanjali. You got any idea who he was? Do you know anything about the Hindu pantheon? About the gods? Pantheon Hinduski. Which names of gods and goddesses do you know? Które jakieś imiona znacie bogów hinduskich? Vishnu, God Vishnu, Vishnu, Krishna, Krishna, God Shiva, Shiva. Do you know any Matthew? Ganesh, Ganesh. I think we just went to a restaurant. Today. Ganesh, the elephant, the elephant. Do you know any? Indra, yes, yeah, yeah, Indra. Yeah. Lakshmi. Lakshmi, that's right. And actually, you know, a lot of people say Hinduism is polytheistic. And um, 
Anyone who studied the Upanishads or the Vedanta Sutra, każdy kto studiował Upanishady albo Vedanta Sutra, will tell you it's not. Odkryje, że to inaczej coś nie jest prawdą. Um, it's not polytheistic. Że ten hinduizm jest polityczny. It allows for variety. Ponieważ on mm. podąża za wielo, wielo but różnością. Philosophically, filozoficznie, it cannot be polytheistic. Filozoficznie nie może być polityczny. Because the all-powerful source of everything can only be one. Ponieważ tak naprawdę źródło wszelkiej emocji może być tylko jedno. Yeah, so this is a philosophical truth, isn't it? To jest taka filozoficzna prawda. You can't have many supreme beings. Nie można mieć wiele najwyższych istot. There's only one of those. Jest tylko jedna taka. By definition, definition. So, you know, and and the Vedantic scholars knew this. They know this very well. Ci, którzy znają Vedantę, wiedzą yeah. o tym. So there's always this conflict in Vedanta between. Dlatego zawsze istnieje w Vedancie istnieje konflikt. How one you are and how many you are. Pomiędzy tym jak jednym jesteś i jak wieloma jesteś. It's very, it's very interesting for those who are scholars, because it's, it's really quite deep. To jest głęboka filozofia, głęboka nauka. You've been studying Krishna for quite a while, Krishna consciousness. Yeah. Did you read any about Chaitanya? Yeah. Of course, yeah. Many years. You read Bhagavad Gita. That's nice. So. Vishnu, of course, you know, the interesting thing is that of course, the, the gentleman who's sitting now in the picture there, he has that, that, you know, I just had a shower, so actually I've lost my tea. Yeah, I didn't bring any tea I But um, do you know what tradition he belongs to? Do you know what tradition he belongs to? There's so much to cover, isn't that? So much ground. To jest bardzo ciekawa historia. He comes from the Sri Sampradaya. On pochodzi z Sri Sampradaya. Yeah, and they have this tea like that. Nie ma właśnie taki taki tea like taki znak na czole z dwoma kreskami. Who is Sri? Do you know who Sri is? Czerwoną w środku. Wiecie kim czy albo czy nie? Do you know who Sri is? Any idea? Sri. Sri is Lakshmi. Shri to jest imię yeah, Lakshmi. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's a Shri Yantra. You see that? Yeah, Shri Yantra. Yeah, it's it's all an arrangement, a very elaborate arrangement of triangles, which you probably see. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, actually, the culture is quite amazing, and then you start looking into it, and you realize this is not just Indian. Przyjrzycie się tam, to stwierdzicie, że ta kultura jest jest jedna. There's a science that connects all these different things together. Ze sobą różne rzeczy. Yantras, mantras, tantras, you know, and they're all, everything is linked together, and it's all linked in with the natural world. I tworzy taki naturalny świat. So it's not Hindu culture at all, we realize. These rishis who originated the Upanishads and the Vedas, they were learners. They were learners. They, they weren't living in cities and they weren't urbanized. They weren't necessarily part of a particular culture either. They lived in wild places, you know, in the mountains, in the forests, by the rivers, you know, away from human Daleko od ludzkich istot. Yeah, sometimes with their disciples, but sometimes alone. Czasami z swoimi uczniami, czasami samotnie. Sometimes with their wives, many of them were married. Z żoną, wielu z nich było żonatych. But they were very tuned into the natural world. Ale byli skupieni do tego, w tym tym natural natural. And their inspiration, if you look at the original Vedas, the Rig Sama and Yajur. Czy rzeczy się oryginalnym będą, czyli Rig i Yajur Sama. People, the modern scholar says it's pantheistic. No, pantheistic. Ani to naukowcy na ocześnie mówią, współcześni naukowcy mówią, że to jest pantheistyczne. Indra, the god of the lightning. Varuna, the god of the sea. A Varuna w wodę. Vayu, the god of the air. Isn't it? And you know all these other gods 
of the natural world, isn't it? Że to są bogowie świata natury. And talks about beings from other dimensions, like Gandharvas. Yeah. 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 Yeah, they were listening to the sounds of the universe. Yeah? Many of the musical systems. Where do they come from? Where do they come from? The Indian musical systems. Yeah? From the birds. Yeah, they're listening to the birds. Like this. And listening to the birds, they imitate the birds, isn't it? Yeah. And even now, if you read the text on music, they'll say this note sounds like this bird or that. And the drum beats, they're all related to natural phenomena. Yeah. This is not an urbanized, sophisticated religion. I suppose what you could say of these rishis was they were shamans. Yeah. Yeah. So um, everyone glorifies the shaman now, isn't it? Because we realize this is something we've lost, isn't it? So person who can go out into the wilds, isn't it? You know, go out into the mountains, live with the bears and the, the wolves. <laughs> there was a there was a movie I think called Dances with Wolves. Did you, did you see that movie? Did you see that movie? No. Did you see that movie? Yeah, Dances with Wolves. A good movie, yeah. yeah. And the Lord appears in the form of a horse. Did you know that? High Griva. Horse incarnation. So in the Gita, Krishna says that I appear regularly. Now, Krishna, when we talk about Krishna, we're not talking about a limited being. Krishna makes some definite statements in the Gita to the effect that I'm God, right, basically. Krishna daje takie mocne stwierdzenia na różnym poziomie, jak pada gdzie z których wynika, że ja jestem Bogiem. The problem is in the West that we have this idea, we have a strange idea of God. Na zachodzie mamy taką dziwną koncepcję na temat Boga. And we have this idea that there's matter over here and God's kind of over there. Mam taką taką ideę, że tutaj jest materia. And he kind of rolls up his sleeve. He goes and gets this matter, isn't it? Like this, you know. And all the your souls and then he takes a little bit of clamp. Two arms, two legs. Okay, So it's kind of a nice idea in a way. But the Vedas describe not, not so much creation, but emanation, isn't it? Yeah. So it, it's it's a quite a mind blowing system for pe people to get their heads around, isn't it? That's, it's Buddhism and actually and Buddhism, Tibetan Buddhism particularly, and Vedic cosmology almost exactly the same. Tak, w zasadzie yeah. to kosmologia buddyjska i buddyzm yeah. tybetański mają podobną kosmologię. Has anyone studied Buddhism at all? Identyczno. Studied a little bit of Buddhism. Trochę, Tibetan Buddhism? Buddhism? No, but, no. Buddhist tybetański. Yeah. Very similar actually. To bardzo podobne. Buddha was a, Gautama Buddha was a Hindu king. Yeah. Buddha był, w yeah. środku był hinduskim królem. And India was always a place. India is a place for religion, isn't it? Where people people spend time talking about religion. I know we do in the West too. You know, we we spend a lot of time, but not as much time as the Indians do. Yeah. And Buddhist Buddhist refined polemics to like a real fine art, isn't it? Polemics, you know, polemics. Yeah. I mean, they talk God into the ground, didn't they? You know, like <laughs> down to the finest details. You know, what is true, what is no, real, what is do, this, you know, the, the wonders, the difference. You know, like you 
and logic, the system of Nyaya. There were six darshanas. You know, six. Have, have you heard of the six darshanas? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Does anyone know what they are, the six darshanas? Any idea? Am I talking to, am I going kind of, am I going off on too wide a kind of a circle? <laughs> is that, are you following? Or? Are you following or is it too, too wide a circle? No, it's all right. Carry on. Yeah. What's a darshana? Anybody know? Do you know what darshan means? Yes, darshan. What's the meaning of darshan? Yes, uh, darshan. I know uh, in this meaning that it's um, like a meeting with guru and uh, like a guru. Guru. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. That's an extended meaning, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but do you know what it really means? Yeah, I mean, I'm not saying it doesn't really mean that, but what's the original meaning? Yeah. To see. Yeah, that's right. It comes from the root drish, which means to see. Yeah. Mm. So a darshana actually in this case means a viewpoint. So there were six darshanas. Six darshanas. And even nowadays, you know, the philosophy, if you study philosophy, they put philosophy into different categories. Isn't it? Idealism, realism, pragmatism, thisism and thatism, phenomenalism, yeah. yeah, and so on and so forth. Did anyone study philosophy? Yeah? Philosophers? You studied it. You know philosophy? So you studied Hegel? Hegel. It's not my main subject. Oh, I, I see. Yeah. I see. Yeah. Epistemology. That would be worse than epistemology. And ontology. Yeah. Ontology. <laughs> Lovely words, yeah. These are words, words coming from Greek, Because for us Westerners, mostly, it was the Greek philosophers who everyone was like, whoa, Socrates and Plato and, you know, and all of that, Aristotle, and, you know, those guys, you know. And even, I mean, you know, even today, it's like most modern philosophy, you can trace the roots back to, you can say he's, he's a Platonist or he's Aristotelian or like this, yeah. and then you get great names like Hegel and so on. Yeah. But actually when, when it was like in that period, Hegel, Schopenhauer and those guys, they discovered something that no one had discovered found out before. What was it they discovered? What did they discover? Anyone know? Sorry? Who opened? Hegel and Schopenhauer and those guys. That was a time when they discovered... That was the Theosophy and all of that was taking place then around that time, wasn't it? They discovered... Buddhism, didn't they? And the Upanishads. Yeah. And, the, and, and Bhagavad Gita, of course. Bhagavad Gita. Bhagavad Gita. Yeah, everyone. Bhagavad Gita is such a text. Everybody like, whoa, Bhagavad Gita. Everyone wants to write a commentary on Bhagavad Gita. Swami Vishwananda writes a <laughs> Every Swami, isn't it? Swami Pragyananda writes a commentary. You know, he says, Krishna t teaches Kriya Yoga. Krishna right. Kriya Yoga. No, he teaches this yoga. <laughs> Krishna teaches Jnana Yoga. <laughs> no, Krishna teaches this or Krishna teaches that. Yeah. And then the Bhakti Yoga will say, Krishna's God. You know? And then the, the Advaitins will say, no, he's not. It's the spirit in Krishna. Yeah. We're all God. You know? <laughs> And this way they make this kind of, this argument going on. Yeah. The Advaitists on one end and the 
I Twice as something other. Twenty at Vaitishi But they all respect the Gita. They know that if I can write a commentary on the Gita, then I'm a real Swami. <laughs> Have you read the Gita? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'll leave you alone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <very good>. Sorry. <laughs> you read the Gita then, haven't you? Did you read the Gita? No, no, completely. Have you read the Gita? Yes. Yeah. Right, yeah. The Gita is actually quite an easy read. And if you want to learn Sanskrit, if you want to learn Sanskrit, the best way to, to learn is to start with the Bhagavad Gita. You'll get all the basic terms and you know ideas. Bhagavad, and Krishna teaches the full comprehensive range of yoga in the Bhagavad Gita. Yeah. He mentions Raja Yoga, which is the Ashtanga Yoga of Patanjali, which I think, and Hatha Yoga is only a part of that. The Hatha Yoga is the asana and pranayama portion. So the Ashtanga Yoga system has eight limbs. Ashta means eight. So the Hatha Yoga is only two of those limbs. Uh -huh. Yeah. And then those the first five limbs are considered to be preliminary. A transcendentalist starts with six. The six, seventh, and eighth limbs are considered to be the mental discipline. Do you know what the limbs are? Anybody know? Different limbs of the Ashtanga Yoga. Is, it, is this interesting or not? Yes. Yes. Kind of. Yeah. Do you do Hatha Yoga by any chance? Yes. Yeah, I see. Yeah. For many years. Every day? Every yeah, day. Yeah, that's nice. It's Every good. second day. Yeah, oh, that's day. Good. You can see I don't really. I, I should do. I used to enjoy swimming when I was a kid. Yeah, I didn't swim, but I and actually, Hatha Yoga really is, is just a basic health exercise for anyone, <coughs> whether you're a yogi or not. Yeah. Yoga really begins with um, Pratyahara and then, and then Dharana, and Dhyana, and then Samadhi is the end Yeah. So with, with pratyahara, then one actually starts to be engaged in the mental discipline. Of What's pratyahara? Do you know? pratyahara? Anybody know pratyahara? It means withdrawing the senses. So. In other words, if you practice the Hatha Yoga system for bodily health, with the idea of exploiting sen the senses for enjoyment, you're actually missing the, the purpose of the yoga system. And that's not the idea, isn't it? So, like, if you take those two bits of Asana and the pranayama, and, and use them just for gaining a healthy body, which you then use for distraction, isn't it? For the purpose of distraction. Then you're going in the opposite direction, actually, from the yoga system. And I'm not saying this dogmatically. Because the, the next stage after that is pratyahara. Pratyahara means drawing the senses in. Yeah. And it's explained like a turtle draws its into its body. 
So the idea is that you can't find the truth that you're looking for out there. Yeah. I think this is one of the most important, one of the most important aspects of yoga. That every yogi, every yogi should know this. And the whole purpose of the mechanical process yeah, is to bring you to the point where you can actually extract your sense, retract them. Just if you can imagine a turtle brings its limbs into its shell um, so that that example is given isn't it? So this, the senses should be directed inwards. Why? Dlaczego? Why? Dlaczego? Any idea? To control them? Why should we want to control our senses? For what purpose? To not follow senses. Sorry? To not follow them, but follow something. Hmm. But why? Dlaczego? Because senses is part of material world. Yes, senses are part of the material world. And took us away from very deep. Zapierają nas z głębokiego, z głębokiego duchowego sensu. Yeah, the reason is quite simple, really. It's because what we're looking for is not outside. Yeah, the point is that we're not looking for what we're looking for. But what we're really looking for is inside. Jest to, czego naprawdę szukamy, jest wewnątrz nas. So, you know, people think this is a prohibition, I'm not supposed to enjoy my senses, you know? God is terrible. To jest okropna koncepcja. He doesn't allow me to enjoy my senses, but that's a misconception. Cieszę się moim ale tak naprawdę to jest zbawienie zrozumienie. We 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 draw us up. We return. Why? Because we want to look in the right place. It's like you're looking for a key. If you're looking for a key, and you're looking in the wrong place, you're not going to find it, are you? What you need to do is you need to sit down and think. Where did I last have the key? We've all had this situation where you lose the key. You have to think. Where do I see? And your body actually knows where the key is. You know, you know, because it knows exactly where you put it. But you've forgotten. So you've got to kind of go back and retrace the situation, and then you've got to remember where you put it. Isn't it? It's that action, is it? Oh right, I know where it is. Isn't it? Yeah. And then you can go there immediately. Yeah, I mean, but you've been looking over there, isn't it? Yeah. So this is the problem in general. People look in the wrong place. In a place where they're not going to find the answers. And that's why yoga is all about going inside. And the Upanishads, the Upanishads say that don't, don't be concerned with what you can see. Mówią, nie zwracaj uwagi na to, co widzisz. Be concerned with... Yeah, thank you. We're making too much noise. <laughs> no. We find out the seer, you know. Who is doing the seeing? Yeah. Do we need the... Yeah. Is there any feedback? What do you think? Anything interesting? Yes. 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 Because no. mostly we don't, we're not aware of who we are. That's right. And there's no greater, more important question really than who am I? And when that's very, very personal. And the only way you can find out that is by having a good look at yourself. Ponieważ to tak naprawdę And you're not out there. Nie, tam gdzieś na zewnątrz. You're in there. Ale musisz popatrzeć na siebie yeah. samego. So you can only have a good look at yourself if you draw your senses in. Popatrzeć na siebie tak naprawdę wtedy kiedy inwards. cofniesz zmysły i popatrzysz wewnątrz się. But it's so much foreign to our way of thinking to actually turn 
the spotlight, like, if you like, on myself, isn't it? Jest takie trochę no, no. trudne, żeby odwrócić się wewnątrz siebie, popatrzeć i zadać sobie pytanie, kim ja jestem. When we do that, we actually find that what is outside is a reflection. I wtedy zobaczymy, dostrzeżemy, że to, co jest na zewnątrz, jest zewnątrz. Of what is inside. Tego, co jest w środku. So all these things we're looking for outside. Jest to, czego szukamy na zewnątrz. We enjoy them because they're reflecting back to us something that's inside of us. And this is a deep secret that's taught by all esoteric philosophies. Isn't it? That the pleasure that you're looking for is not outside of you, but it's inside. And you can evoke that at any time you like. Możesz to odkryć w każdej chwili, kiedy chcesz, w której chcesz. Yeah. Are there any questions on that? Jak to jakieś pytania? How to do it? Sorry? How we can do it? Jak to zrobić? How we can find ourselves? Jak odkryć siebie? Well. There are easy answers to that question. There are difficult answers. <laughs> In the Yoga Sutra, Patanjali it describes the whole system of how the mind works, how the, how the internal airs work, all the meridians, if you've probably seen the acupuncture and all that, they got all the meridians, you've seen that, you know, the bodies with the meridians, you put your needle here, it hurts in your toe, isn't it? <laughs> and so on. And, um, and then people are arguing now about the shape of the universe. Even the even the quantum physicist is looking, trying to find the smallest thing. And the, the astronomer is looking, trying to find the biggest thing. But whatever they look at, they find themselves reflected back to them. Especially within the realm of quantum physics, isn't it? They're kind of amazed now because they realize that it's all a game. And that matter itself behaves in the way in which we expect it to. Even mathematicians are amazed. They think, how is it that our mass works? We make an equation and the universe works like that. They think, oh, that's amazing. So, but it never strikes them to think, well, maybe there's a connection between my mind and the universe. <laughs> yeah. So, also we realize that when we change our attitude towards life, things change. If we get really depressed, everything becomes depressed, isn't it? And the darker we get, the darker everything gets, isn't it? And the brighter we get, the nicer everything gets. Isn't it? But these are only external things. Isn't it? Still, the burning question is still, who am I? Ale tak naprawdę to najważniejsze pytanie to jest. And there's an easy answer to that question. Jest odpowiedź na to pytanie. And, uh, but to understand that answer, it's necessary to consider the philosophy. Trzeba wziąć troszkę filozofii. Yeah, anyone got any clues to this? Czy ktoś ma jakiś big question? Po, po, pomysł na to, na to pytanie? Yeah? Maybe later. Sorry? Later. What? Later, later. What do you mean later? After yes, after some time I will ask something. <laughs> I think. Yeah. Well, she knows the answer. What's the answer? Okay, how we can know that we opened ourselves, that I found this point? It is like happiness. If I'm happy, it means I did this. It means I found, or it does not connect with happiness. It's a very interesting question because most people, when they think about life, they realize there's two things, isn't there? there's happiness and there's distress. 
So happiness is something we generally like and we want. Jest czymś, co lubimy, czego and distress is something we generally don't like and we want to avoid. Czego nie chcemy, co chcemy so this is called duality. So all yoga systems recognize that we are locked into a system of duality. In that we, we want happiness, so we pursue happiness, and we don't want distress, so we try to avoid unhappiness. So a lot of people undertake yoga with the specific purpose of reducing the level of distress and increasing the level of happiness. But in a sense, you're putting your priorities in the wrong place when you seek happiness for its own sake. Yeah. Just like if you have a particular project to perform, say you're an artist, or say you're a composer, right? And you have this amazing composition in your mind. So your Mozart, Mozart would, would see the whole concerto in one. He'd hear all the, all the instruments all playing at the same time. All at once, in a moment. You know? Then he'd write it all down without changing a note. We call that a genius, isn't it? Obviously he's being inspired, this obviously inspiration. But a person who's inspired in that way is not, doesn't care for happiness or distress. The important thing is to put that down onto paper. Whether it hurts or not, isn't it? Whether it hurts or not. It's like if an artist doesn't have any paint, he'll cut his own fingers and make the paint out of his own blood to paint the picture, isn't it? Do you understand what I'm saying? So there's a higher principle to this idea of avoiding distress and embracing happiness. Just, to get, just, for, just imagine that somewhere off in Australia, there's some young man who you're totally in love with, right? Absolutely besotted with him. You probably already have a young man, but I'm just giving an example. There's a young woman somewhere in Australia, right? who you met for the first time at some party. And she gave you a picture and a number. And she went back to Australia. <laughs> right? So there you are, you're with a picture and the number. You've got to get to Australia somehow. You have to because desperately in love. Right? You don't have any money, so you, you know you've got to take a meager job somewhere to scrape some money together. Then you've got to get on a boat. You can't afford to take a plane. You know, scrub the deck. You know, whatever, whatever it is you have to do you know, to get there. Finally, you know, she lives out in the middle of the wilderness. You've got to walk a hundred miles. You know, and finally, you get there, and, and you meet. Like, yeah, all of that pain was all worth it, isn't it? All of that pain, all of that distress becomes worth it. Yeah. So actually, one of the big secrets about the world is it, it's everything is actually about love. Now this is really corny because everyone says the same thing. And the, the fact that everyone says the same thing means it must be true, of course. But we can also check within our own being to think, is that correct? And we all know, everyone knows knows that the, without love, everything else is unimportant. So every single one of us is looking for that perfect love. Perfect. And it's all very personal. You know, it's got to be the one who I just click with. Yeah. A relationship which I will sacrifice everything for. And that's actually the essence of bhakti. And um, in the Gita, Krishna says, I am Suhidam Sarvabhuta. 
says, I am the most dear friend of everybody. Jestem największym przyjacielem wszystkich. Mm. So this is also a very large thing. It's also a very individual and personal. Jest bardzo szeroka rzecz, ale także mm. wąska indywidualna. Yeah, in other words, we're all looking for that perfect relationship. Ja wszyscy szukamy tej relacji. It's about relationships. You know, and we're all ultimately prepared to sacrifice anything and everything for that. Isn't it? Is it not true? Is that true or not? <laughs> you don't think so, God? What's your idea? Simple, I'm not sure that love it is the most important thing in our life. Ja myślę po prostu, że Maybe because I'm selfish. Życie, bo na love relationships within this world tend to be rather limited and oftentimes quite painful. Oczywiście miłość w tym świecie jest ograniczona i być może pełna również cierpienia. So the nature of spiritual things is there's no limiting factor. Więc natura duchowych rzeczy jest to, że one nie mają sobie ograniczenia. So there's an acceleration that moves into infinity, isn't it? Także to do nie. Yeah. Just imagine you have a racing car. Pomyślmy, zanim taki przykład, że masz taki wyścigowy samochód. And it can go very, very fast. Możesz jechać bardzo szybko. But you still cannot run around Warsaw at supersonic speeds. Can you? You can't do it. You, know? you need a straight road that goes off into infinity. You need to be accelerate infinitely. So whatever you're looking for, at the end of the day, we're limited within our sphere. Like, for instance, we have a good body now. We may have a good body now. But we know that it will reach the limit of its abilities, and then it will decline, isn't it? And at a certain point, it will, will be we'll get off this train and we'll have to... Some people think that's it. When the body dies, that's the end. Some people think that. In India, I think in the East, nobody thinks like that. Everyone, everyone understands that life goes on without limit. So whatever we're looking for, even if we're looking for knowledge, we want unlimited knowledge. Nie Noise it doesn't have any boundaries. Taki, która nie posiada żadnych ograniczeń. Mm. If we want to dance, we want to be able to dance. Tańczyć, chcemy tańczyć. In a theater that has no w teatrze, który nie ma końca. And we want to be able to move with total freedom. Chcemy być w takim stanie pełnej wolności. But yet we find the body and this situation that we're in doesn't permit us to do that. Yeah. So we're in a limited, a limiting situation. Yeah. yeah. So, any questions? Anything that's yeah. By doing yoga, you can improve your body. And you can even maybe extend your life to some degree. But the, um, the, ve- the, the Bhagavatam particularly makes it clear there are certain things you're born with. And, and it's, good, it's good to know this. Things that you can't change, actually. Not in this life. So you can alter what will happen in the next life. But when you're born, you're born with certain irreversible factors. One of them, for the capitalists, I should say, one of them is that you cannot increase the amount of money that you will receive. You will get exactly how much you're destined to get. No more and no less. <laughs> whether you ask for it, whether you work for it, or whether you don't. And you see practically, some people work very hard and they make hardly anything. Some people sit in one place and this money just comes to them. 
Who are you going to marry? It's already no, destined. No, no, There's no, no, you can't change it. It's already in your stars, it's born. Okay. And so you don't have to go looking around. <coughs> A person will come to you and you'll get married. Yeah. You know, your children, how many children you have? How happy you will be. This means not in terms of spiritual things, but in terms of material happiness. Yes. The joys that you'll get from your life. You can't increase that, and you can't decrease it. So there's no point in looking for happiness. Whatever happiness you're destined to experience, that will come to you as a matter of course. Right? And the sufferings that you're destined to experience will also come as a matter of course. You don't have to look for them. Right? Yeah. And the other thing is how long your life will be. Right? So your life is measured in terms of breaths. So you will take so many breaths. Even in the Bible it says that, that your breaths are counted. Right. You have a certain number of breaths. Yeah. How many millions of breaths that might be? And then gradually, each time you take a breath, that count is reduced by one. And when it comes to zero, that is the end of your life. In this body. Not the end of your life, but the end of this body. That's why the yogis, they spend time trying to slow down their breath. Yeah. Because if you breathe more slowly, of course you use up the number more slowly. But you still have the same number, exactly the same number. <laughs> that's quite sobering, isn't it? You know? When you think about that, you think that's really... That means I don't have to look for happiness. I don't have to go out looking for a, a spouse. I don't have to worry about money. Yeah? What were the other things, you know? I've forgotten what they were now. And I, I'm not, I don't have to worry about how long I'm going to live. I'm just going to live so long. So the real point that we really need to get to the bottom of is what is the meaning of my life and what am I supposed to be doing with it? And this is where all spiritual philosophies come in and make it very clear that the human form of life, the human form of life is the life in which we can do something. Jest formą życia, w której możemy coś zrobić, czego możemy zrobić duchowy postęp. So it's not to be wasted. Every moment of our human life, każdy moment is a valuable moment. Życia, ludzkie życie ma wartość. It doesn't matter what spiritual path you follow. Actually, tak naprawdę nie ma znaczenia jaką duchową ścieżką podążasz. Therefore, I'm not proposing any particular path. Dlatego nie nie proponuję jakiejś konkretnej duchowej ścieżki. If you don't have a path, if you don't have a path, then you can get you can say, "All right, chant this mantra." Okay, we'll just try to do this. 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 But if you already have a path, but if you already have a path, there's no point in trying to convert someone from one path to another. There's no point in trying to convert someone from one path to another. There's no point in trying to convert someone from one path to another. There's no point in trying to convert someone from one path to another. There's no point in trying to convert someone from one path to another. There's no point in trying to convert someone from one path to another. There's no point in trying to convert someone from one path to another. There's no point in trying to convert someone from one path to another. There's no point in trying to convert someone from one path to another. There's no point in trying to convert someone from Any question? How to find uh, the perfect for myself path? Because um, I have some experience of it. And uh, you said, Swami, that Hatha Yoga is, I don't know, I'm not very <laughs> high level. But I remember time when I did Hatha Yoga very often. Mm -hmm. and and so for me it was a beautiful meditation. Mm -hmm. uh, when I had to concentrate on my breath mm -hmm. and I felt uh, 
calm and I was peaceful. Wtedy uspokajałam się i byłam spokojna. Also I practiced Zen meditation. Tak mm-hmm. Zen. Mm-hmm. Uh, and um, it was beautiful experience because my to było uh, takie wspaniałe doświadczenie. Uh, brain was calm. Yes. Mm-hmm. Was, się, nie biegał But dookoła. I missed some for something different. Ale no, coś mi brakowało w tym. Mm-hmm. I was uh, interested in uh, Vaishnavas. Vaishnavas. Interested in 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 Makes me cry inside. Interested in Vaishnavas. Interested in Vaishnavas. In a group, I don't feel. Uh, group, uh, yeah. I don't know. I'm not peaceful. Yeah. I'm group, not yeah. 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 Nie w świątyni, nie w grupie. Ale że to jest ważne, żeby być w grupie. Ale to nie dało mi żadnego wyciszenia. Ja ubiłam się w poszukiwaniu własnej yeah. ścieżki. Lubię być samotna i podążać medytacją, a nie mówić o czymś. Sound like yeah. dance, you know, yeah. Czasami tęsknię za dźwiękiem muzyki. Yes. Um, Czy śpiewałeś jakieś mantrze? 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 What mantra do you chant? Any mantra? Any mantra? Any mantra? Om Namah Shivaya. Guru Ramda. Guru Ramda. Are you going, yeah? Oh, you like them all, yeah? Yes, I do. And you? Yes, I do. Everybody knows a lot of mantras now, isn't it? Yes, I think so. I'm trying. Ah, yeah. I'm trying to get a little bit of a problem. Guru Ram does. Yeah, I know. He has has many tapes. I don't know. Om Namah Shivaya. He shouts that one lot, doesn't he? Om Namah Shivaya. Is that Gurandas? Huh? No. No? Is that Sikh? Is he Sikh? Is he Sikh him? Yes. Ah, I see. Yeah. A lot of people are attracted to Sikhism. Yeah. You can see, I'm, I obviously belong to a particular sect. But I'll be really honest with you, I've, I've been involved with this for many, many years and I've travelled around, I've seen many things, you know? and I have a lot of respect for many different traditions, you know? and um, I see that people within each, within their own tradition is trying to do something similar. Yeah. So, Yeah, you know, some people are chanting Om Namah Shivaya, other people are chanting Om Ganesha, Om Namah Ganesha. You know, some people are chanting Om Namah Bhagavate Vasudevaya, some people are singing, you know, Ave Maria and so on and so forth. You know, and, and you get to the stage, you think, well, I don't want to try to encourage people to do what I do, just because I do it. <laughs> so we could do maybe some chanting, I don't know, together. Is there anything you would like to chant? Could you, would you like to recommend something? What would you like to chant? Should we do some chanting together? Would that be nice? What would you like to chant? Any recommendations? Yeah? Yeah? What I recommend, on a general basis, 
is trying to get up early in the morning. To co polecam tak w zasadzie ogólnie, to um, wstać rano. Spend some time in the early morning. pewien czas po poranku. Before you do anything else in the day. Zanim zrobisz cokolwiek innego w ciągu dnia. Um, you have a glass of water or something, you know? Wiesz, sobie and wody. To spend some time doing some in inner work. In the early morning, before you do anything else. Whatever it is that you want to do, whether you whether you want to chant, or whether you want to pray, or whether you just want to sit quietly and be in the presence of God. Być w takiej chwili, w której jest się w obecności. Perhaps there's something that you used to do a long time ago. When you were a child, kiedy byłeś dzieckiem. Maybe there was a prayer that you used to say when you were a child. Może była jakaś modlitwa, którą mówiłaś kiedy byłeś dzieckiem. Some long forgotten prayer that your mother used to say. Tak, to zapomniana modlitwa. And you think, oh, I'd like to say that prayer. Okay, and, um, mam ochotę i lubię powiedzieć tą modlitwę. Because it's really personal, it's really important that we should generate some feeling of devotion. Devotion is important. takie uczucia czy emocje And you can't, devotion is not something you can artificially create, isn't it? You can, to jest coś, czego się możesz w sztuczny sposób wykreować. You can kind of evoke certain impetuses towards devotion, can't you? Or deepen, as we call them, impetuses, you know? Just like familiar smells, familiar sounds. Particularly this, maybe this incense that you like. Incense smell can sometimes evoke strong feelings, isn't it? And there's a particular incense that you like. A sandalwood incense that you smell in some temple somewhere. Okay. You got your little altar. It's nice to have a little altar. Może dobrze jest posiadać mały ołtarz. And whoever you like. Cokolwiek tam po, lubisz, to możesz tam posiadać. I like, I'm a goddess worship. I'm, I'm telling you this is my secret. Ja z radą swoją tajemnicę jestem wielcielem bogini. Krishna is over there. Krishna jest na zboku. Goddess is over Bogini jest na środku. Right? Radha. Radha. So, so I like my little candle. Tak, jest białko, lampkę. And you can chant the name, isn't that whatever name? Is. There's something special about chanting the name. Whatever name that may be that evokes something for you. In a prayerful and devotional attitude. W tym modlitewnym i pełnym oddania nas. And it's very personal, isn't it? It's really very personal. You put on your altar the things that attract you, isn't it? Whatever it might be, a peacock feather, a stone that you got from the beach, in Portugal or wherever. You know what I mean? Or you know. Something that reminds you of you, your great grandmother, you know. <laughs> or whatever it is that, kind of, that uh, you know, that uh, or a picture of your cat. <laughs> you, know, you know, whatever it is that helps you to um, enter into a, into a devotional mood. You know? Yeah. So, and if you start off the day in this way, like quietly. W ten sposób dzień. Just allow the mind to be quiet, you know? To pozwoli wejść umysłowi yeah. w taki spokój. Quietness you find was, is very, very valuable thing. Very, very ten spokój umysłu jest bardzo wartością rzeczą. And gradually you begin to realize that you can hear more when you're quiet. I wtedy zdajesz sobie sprawę, że będąc w takim yeah. stanie uspokojenia, okay. możesz więcej usłyszeć. Yeah. If you want to know things, jeśli chcesz wiedzieć rzeczy, quietness is the way to know things. Więc cisza jest sposobem, aby wiedzieć right. te więcej so rzeczy. So trying to know it, jeśli starasz się wiedzieć, quiet, po prostu no. musisz and allow wiedzieć, that knowledge to come wiedzę, into your heart of its own accord. Wejść do swojego right. serca. So the mind is like a lake. Jest jak jezioro. 
And in that lake there's a lotus flower, isn't it? And in that lotus flower there's a gem, a jewel. So first of all we need to allow the mind to become calm. And what we need to know will just automatically come into view, isn't it? And see, yes. A thing that I was looking for. To jest ta rzecz, której ja szukam. Well, inside me. To jest ta rzecz, która jest wewnątrz mnie. Not somewhere outside. A nie gdzieś na zewnątrz. Yeah. So if you don't have a mantra, we can chant Om Namo Bhagavate. Jeśli nie macie mantra, możemy spróbować mantra. Om Namo Bhagavate. We'll try it for a while. Let's see how we go. Zobaczymy, jak to będzie. Yeah. So after we finish chanting, we'll, we'll take it easy. To w angielsku zawsze, jak skończymy intonować, to będzie proste. And afterwards we'll just sit for a few moments quietly. Więc jak skończymy, to będziemy chwilę siedzieć w ciszy. Everyone knows the mantra? Om Namo Mantra. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Vasudevaya. Vasudeva means one who lives everywhere. Vasudevaya. Vasudeva znaczy ten, który żyje, czy istnieje, jest wszędzie. Oh, 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 oh,
Hare Hare (laughs) 
the count of three. <laughs> One, two, three. You're coming back into external consciousness. <laughs> Thank you for coming. That's nice. Nice to meet you all. You got your passport? Is your hair naturally red? It's very nice though. <laughs> Krishna is closer to us than we believe he is. Krishna is blisko nas, w to wierzymy. He's with us all the time. Z nami ten czas. So, that's easy, isn't it? It's not difficult. Nie jest łatwo, ale nie jest, yy, nie jest trudne. You may not call him Krishna, you may call him something else. Możesz go nazywać Krishna, możesz go nazywać inaczej. No, the same thing. Ale to jest zawsze ta sama rzecz. So all we have to do is turn, turn our faces towards him. Wszystko to, co musimy zrobić, to odwrócić swoją twarz ku niemu. Pani Szady mówią, że na drzewie są dwa ptaki. I na wersji dwa supłana, dwa birds. Znaczy ten wersja nam mówi o tym, że są dwa ptaki. Imagine this, you're in a cinema. To jest taki... You come in with your best friend. Także przychodzicie ze swoim najlepszym przyjacielem. You sit down. Siadacie razem. Best friend is sitting here. Najlepszy przyjaciel siedzi tutaj. You're sitting here. A ty siedzisz tutaj. It's going to be a really fantastic movie. To będzie jest fantastyczny sam film. The lights go down. Światła się zbliżają. And as the lights go down, you forget who you are. I kiedy światła gasną, zapominasz o tym, kim jesteś. You forget your friend is sitting there. Zapominasz o swoim przyjacielu, który siedzi obok i zaczyna się film. As it so many things go on. So I should know so much. Tam się dzieje na tym filmie. The movie is all about you. Ale film jest o tobie. But you are different. Ale jesteś inny. You're looking for your friend. Jesteś kimś innym. Szukasz swojego przyjaciela. Yeah, and then the end of the movie comes. You've forgotten. You're completely identified with what was on the screen. Zapominasz o tym wszystkim. Patrzysz na ten obraz i płaczesz. My friend, where's my friend? Gdzie jest mój przyjaciel? Gdzie jest mój przyjaciel? And then the lights, the movie finishes. I film się kończy, światła się rozjaśniają. And he looks. I patrzysz. Sitting where? On the edge of the bed. Is that okay? Is that okay? All right. Thank you very much. Thank you.